Hi, I'm Alan Chong, the 2023-24 president of the IEEE Professional Communication Society, or PROCOM for short, and an associate teaching professor at the Institute for Studies in Transdisciplinary Engineering Education and Practice, or ISTEP, at the University of Toronto. And welcome to this very quick video on giving better conference presentations. Now, in this video, we'll help you to make better presentations, focusing on two things. First, building a strong introduction, and then second, using the assertion evidence model for slide design. Now remember, this is just a really short taster for a longer uh, set of in-person workshops with many more principles and an opportunity to apply them to your own work. So make sure you watch out for your opportunity to do those. Now you can ask your IEEE society or conference about the possibility of putting on one of these in a location near you. First, if we look at the research on how people listen to presentations, we see very quickly that introductions are really important. The research shows that people are much more likely to listen to a speech, think more highly of a speaker, and also understand a speech better with a good introduction. And there are really three key things that an introduction needs to be able to do. First, you need to find a way to connect your audience to the topic. Usually, in an engineering context, that involves explaining why an audience should care about something, or identifying the problem that you're dealing with, or the question that you're trying to answer. So rather than starting out with, I'm going to talk about and insert random topic here, explain why those topics are important or what problems exist within that field that need to be solved. Basically, we're moving away from just a statement of topic and towards trying to find a way to engage your audience at the outset and make them understand the significance of your talk to their own work or to their daily lives. Now, secondly, you should be really identifying what the main claim of the presentation will be, rather than just hinting at what your presentation will do. If you can answer these questions for the audience right at the start of your talk, that is, what were your actual findings or what will your audience learn from this talk, it's going to help their, uh, frame their understanding of the material in the presentation. Now, you might lose a little bit of suspense, but that's not really something we want in an engineering presentation anyways, and they'll know better how to understand what is coming up in the rest of the talk. In other words, you're trying to present a clear core message at the outset of the presentation. Giving your audience this message really helps them to contextualize the rest of the material in the presentation. Finally, your introduction should clearly identify the structure and organizational logic of your presentation. This means that you'll provide an overview of the presentation, but this overview needs to be very specific. Saying, for example, that your presentation will give background, explain your methods, and show your results and then discuss them, that's not going to be very helpful at all since that just really explains the scientific method and should really apply to almost all engineering presentations. Instead, identify what you are giving background on, what is the key method that you'll be explaining, and what are the key results you'll be discussing or the key finding from those results. Answering these three sets of key questions in your introduction is going to help create a clear core message at the start of the presentation that will help your audience get engaged, become more informed about the, what the presentation is about, and know better what to expect for the rest of the presentation. And with that, you should have a really solid foundation for a good talk right at the outset of your presentation. Now, let's move to the second key principle of this talk related to slide design and somewhat related to the idea of having a core message in your introduction. Now, when we design slides, we often focus on the visuals and the text in the body of the slide. And yes, that's very important. In fact, the longer version of this workshop, um, we talk about the key principles for designing those components a fair amount. But the quickest and highest impact thing you can do in designing a slide is to think very carefully and proactively about the sentence header at the top of each slide. And that's what the assertion evidence model gets you to do. This model gets you to think about a slide as having a central claim, which you articulate in the sentence header at the top, and evidence, so the text and visuals below, which you design and structure in order to support that central claim. In these two slides, for example, we see some visuals in the body, but remain quite unclear on how to interpret them. Now, it is possible that in our speech, we help the audience understand this, but we can design our slides to help interpret the information more effectively simply by rethinking the headings at the top. In these slides, they serve as topic statements rather than assertions, and the meaning of those visuals below remain unclear. 
Now the assertion evidence model gets presenters to instead develop a succinct sentence header with a main assertion of the slide at the top of the slide, as that's the area uh, of initial focus for our eyes. And then the body of the slide basically functions to serve as evidence to support that claim. Now, as we look at this revised slide, we know what we're supposed to get from it, and the information in the body of the slide is structured to support that message with the comparison between these two visuals. Similarly, in this slide, transforming the slide topic statement into an assertion allows us to see what the significance of those grid lines in the previous slide are and what this visual is actually supposed to represent. So, this structure works for a few key reasons. First, it ensures that you know what your message for every single slide in your deck is, and there should be a message, not just information. It also gives that message a prominent place in the visual, in the header where our eyes land when a new slide is uncovered. And finally, it forces you to structure information, text and visuals on the slide in order to best support that message, providing evidence for that claim. Okay. So those two quick tips should give you a good starting point for planning your presentation and your slide deck for your conference talk. They are just a starting point, however, and there are quite a few other things to consider, including presentation planning and design principles, delivery metrics and strategies, and even how to practice. Again, if you'd like to hear more, I'd encourage you to talk to your IEEE Society and conference about how to make a longer presentation workshop from IEEE ProCom a part of an upcoming event. And feel free to contact me or the Procom Expert Network for more information. Thanks very much for your time.